Hello, version 1.3 of the firmware for the I.O. mixer, that's this thing here, is out now and I wanted to make a little video to show you one of the new features which is MIDI over USB and this is enabled by coming into this panel here and selecting Virtual COM port and MIDI then you would click set USB class and then you need to power cycle the device so that next time it starts up it will present itself to your computer as a MIDI device now, for those of you who might be thinking, wait a minute, wasn't there already some kind of MIDI feature in this thing already? Um, yes, there was, but it was using the older style of MIDI communication, which is over a UART connection. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of devices out there these days that use that. Most modern uh, MIDI devices like this Akai keypad here will be using USB, which makes things a lot easier to connect to a computer and to get information going in and out of your digital audio workstation. So to do any of the things that I'm going to show you in this video you will of course need a computer in between your two uh, MIDI devices. So the Akai keypad is connected to the computer and the IO mixer is connected to the computer through the USB cable there as well. And you'll also need some sort of software on your computer to connect these things together that knows how to deal with MIDI inputs and outputs and for that I'm using this digital audio workstation or DAW for short and this one's called Reaper and it's a pretty good one um, most of these softwares have a pretty high learning curve and this one is no exception but I've managed to figure out <laughs> just enough to do what I need to do for this demo um, so on the track one uh, we'll see here that we have an input coming from the Akai keypad and for track one, the output is going to the IO mixer MIDI input. So from the IO mixer's point of view, this is the input. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to pass input directly from the Akai keypad to the IO mixer. But we also need to, of course, uh, set up the configuration on the IO mixer, and that's what it looks like. So we're going to look for a note event on channel one of index 39. And we're just going to use that to directly control the brightness of one of the RGB LEDs, which is done like this. So this is keypad 39, pad 39. And that's about as simple as you can get like that. Uh, and you can see that when I'm pressing it after I touch it, it has after touch. <laughs> that's why it's called after touch. Uh, so it's giving me that sort of signal if I press it really hard like that. Uh, so that's a note event. And we can also listen for control events. So this time we're going to look for a control event again on channel 1. And index 21, which is my slider, one of the sliders on the Akai keypad thing. And that's going to be controlling the position of a servo uh, via the servo PWM output pulse there. And if we just have a look at how that works, that's this slider. We can see the servos being controlled like that and of course we also want to do some input from the IO mixer going the other way right so to do that we have an analog input which is this potentiometer just one of those turny things and that's going to go to a MIDI out this time so from the IO mixer's point of view this is an output right that's why it has this out arrow and we're going to send a control event on channel 1 uh, index 15 or control channel 15 that the naming is a little bit confusing here uh, and the value of that is going to be taken from the potentiometer uh, so to look at what's going to happen with that we kind of need to um, so I'm going to go like this right just pretend that even though you can't see it I'm going to be going like that with the dial uh, but now we need to I'm going to turn that one off so we're not recording from that and we'll look at track 2 which has the input is set to be taken from uh, IO mixer MIDI out all channels and if I record now let's put my time thingy here so I'll push the record button and then I will twiddle with the uh, potentiometer a little bit and there's not really that much to see so I'll just stop that there but if I double click on this, you can see see a little bit of um, lines showing there. But if we look at that with the more zoomed in view, we can see down here control channel 15 was doing this while it was recording. Uh, so this is how I was moving my potentiometer. Um, so 
what's really neat about this is you can record a lot of data because you're not just recording this on the microcontroller now you have access to an actual computer to record potentially you know minutes or hours of data um, and you can also play it back so if I now go back to my configuration and we'll go back to what the servo was doing now the servo was taking control channel 21 but we just recorded something into control channel 15 so if I select this and change it to control channel 15 and then we got to arrange my windows a little bit here let's put this over there and then we'll turn the camera on put my time thingy back to here now if I play this you'll see nothing because what did I do wrong see that's what I was saying there's a whole lot of things you've got to do uh, what did I get wrong here let's have a look Oh, I didn't upload it. <laughs> Did I upload it? No, I didn't. See the server moved this then? Sorry about that. It's quite a few things you need to get right. Not sure if I'll edit that out. I might just leave it in. Anyway, let's try again. So we'll put the time bar here and then I'll play it. So now you can see what I was doing with the potentiometer while you weren't looking. Um, yeah, so that's how you can have inputs and outputs. But keep in mind, all of these outputs could be doing all kinds of other things even sent over wireless connection with a nrf24 or coming in from a wired connection from a you know rc control radio or something like that uh the sky's the limit for what you can configure these to do and just to finish off the video one other configuration i made was to i played a little bit of piano so if we so if we look over here a bit we'll see one that i prepared earlier that i used my actual keyboard midi keyboard to do this uh, so what this is going to do is I had to put it into two tracks because I want this track track two is going to send it to the MIDI in as we just saw track one I'm going to switch this this to something called uh, MIDI through port and the reason I'm going to do that is because MIDI through port is what my um, piano simulator thing needs to listen to so let me get that set up Okay, I have this virtual instrument set up here now. It's uh, just a piano, pretty nice sounding piano in this uh, set of stuff. Piano Tech, I quite like it. Haven't paid for it yet, as you can see. A little bit expensive, these things, so I'm just <laughs> using the trial, which disables itself after a few minutes. So we can't delay, but anyway, if I click over here, and now I, you see there's a few notes here. If I just play that, you can see, you can see the output from... Uh, I think the top track there is going into this thing to get some sound for us. But just before we launch into my masterpiece here, I remembered one other thing I was going to show you, which is um, how we can make notes, because I was using my dial just to make changes in a control channel. Uh, but if we wanted to actually play a note, we'd have to change this output sty style or type to note. And then the index is which note you want to play in that case. So if I set this to 64, sorry, no, 60, I think, is middle C. Let's try for middle C. And there's a very useful uh, page you can look at here called Hardware Tester. And let me just get this out of the way. So we can see what's going on here. And if I move my dial a bit, kind of need to have a whole bunch of things on the screen all at once, don't I? But if I move my dial, you can see in that web page it's um, logging all of the MIDI events that are being produced by this device. In this case, I've set it to IO Mixer MIDI out. So you can select up here which device you want to listen for events from. Um, and so what I wanted to do was play a note, right? So let me upload this now that I've changed it. And if I come back to this page, you'll see we got a note. It's middle C. But if I twiddle my dial now, it's not very useful because, oops, are we getting any events there? Um, let's clear that. Oh, it's gone to hide after touch. For some reason this checkbox gets set again. Anyway, there we go. So you can see it's giving after touch events now. So it considers that middle C is pressed until it goes below zero. When it goes above zero, it's pressed again. So, sorry, if I turn my dial all the way to the left, 
I'm looking at this note here, it turns off. Then when it's non-zero, it turns on again. But when it turns on, it's going to be almost no sound. So what's happening here is we're sending the velocity of almost nothing. So it, it means we're pressing the, the key on the piano very, very softly. So we are playing a note, but it doesn't, doesn't really make a sound because it's just too soft. But what we could do is make it as loud as possible by using a binary operator. And instead of sending the analog value directly, we will use a test to check if it's greater than half. In which case, whoops. So I'm just going to swap this to here and this to here. And I'll highlight this or enable that display there so you can see what it is. It's zero at the moment, but what happens is when my dial goes above halfway, I'll turn this one on too so you can see what the input is. So it's at zero, and then when it gets over 0 0.5, it outputs a one. And a one is like the loudest note you can play. And as we, as you can hear, this thing is listening for those events as well, so we, we actually hear it properly this time. Oops, you can see my fingers. There we go. So you could use a combination of some kind of logic like, like this. Um, obviously you wouldn't use an analog dial probably to make a note like that. You'd probably just have a button. But this is, you know, this is how it works. Um, so let's get back to what I was going to finish off the video with. These videos always go longer than uh, than I expect, don't they? Okay, so I'll finish off the video with some pretty lights, and each light is going to be showing up based on the key on the piano that I was pushing when I played this. I actually just ad-libbed this a little bit while I was fiddling around with the piano tech to see what each instrument sounded like, but it's, it turned out to be quite nice, so I kept it, and that's what you're going to listen to. Don't go away. <laughs> Uh, but what's going to happen here is it's a bit clumsy the way things are set up. Let me just get that out of the way. But each LED is governed by this kind of a setup here. Uh, so we have some noise, and the noise is being gradually chained, uh, changed over an interval of um, one second, and it interpolates smoothly between one value to the next. Uh, noise which is just random number, basically. And each one of those is being used to select a red or a green or a blue. And the color of that is being scaled by the volume of, or the velocity of each note and then it's just going into a different LED so if this is LED 1 and then we've got LED 2 and so on and there's 72 uh, no what is this 60 I don't know 1 2 3 4 5 40 so there's 44 notes total that I had to set up most of it's just copying and pasting so it's not as bad as it looks to set up um, but all the same, it's not very sophisticated, and I think I think we can do something better in the future for setting up this kind of thing a little bit more intelligently. But anyway, if we go back to this thing, and let me get my windows in place for you to look at this amazing rendition. And uh, where is it? Here we go. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.